my friends, welcome back. Today we have a special guest, and it is former CIA officer Jason Hansen. Hey, hey Jason. Thanks. Hey, thanks for having me, Adam. So, Jason, for people who don't know you, can you a little bit do like an introduction? Sure, yeah. I mean, I, I can give you a quick intro. So, I'm a former CIA officer. Um, I wrote a New York Times bestselling book that called Spy Secrets Can Save Your Life. And now I run a private security company where we do evasive driving, pistol, mm -hmm. rifle, escape and evasion, self-defense training, and wow. you know, a, a bunch of safety trainings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, Jason, uh, since uh, you were in the CIA and this is more like a knife channel, you know, can you say like, do CIA wear some uh, knives? They have some uh, special knife or, uh, or just the pistols? So no, 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 I had a knife. I carry a knife all the time. And I can't go into exactly what kind of knife it is, but oh, okay. I would often, because, you know, here, when I'm in the U.S. right now in America, I can have a knife clipped in my pants pocket. It doesn't matter if anybody sees the clip. It's no uh -huh. big deal. But I would have a knife inside my appendix. So it would be appendix carry knife. I would have my shirt over it. That way nobody could see it. Mm -hmm. And often it was a small fixed blade knife that I had. And uh, what was there like uh, other tools that you were wearing? You had like a gun, and what was like a what was the EDC basically? Or sure, everything? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can I can tell you my EDC nowadays, and I can tell you my EDC then. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so nowadays my EDC is usually it's a six hour P365 that I'm carrying. Mm -hmm. Um, and if I'm going, because I live in Utah in the mountains, so if I'm going up in the mountains, I may have the six hour in my pocket of a Springfield 1911 on my hip. Uh, I've always got a knife clipped in my pants pocket, you know, just some oh. type of knife. I carry a tactical pen everywhere I go. So my other pants pocket will have a tactical pen. And then I have this kind of uh, EDC belt where I've got a lock pick set. I've got a razor blade. I've got extra cash. I always have our extra cash on me. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's mostly my EDC these days. Mm -hmm. Now, with the agency, it always changed. Depend on where you are, what you're doing. So I didn't always have a gun on me. So sometimes I had a gun. Sometimes I didn't have a gun. Uh, you know, you might have a lockpick set kind of sewn into their shirt collar kind of thing, like hidden, very well sewn in so like mm -hmm. nobody can see. Um, you might have a razor blade sewn in. But sometimes, you know, what I always tell people is, let's pretend you're a spy. You're overseas in France. If you get stopped by the police, they can't find a gun and all this crazy stuff on mm -hmm. you. So you've mm -hmm. got to blend in. So there were times where the only thing I had on me was a knife, but that was one of the pieces of gear I always wanted on me no matter what was, hey, I've got this small fixed blade knife and I could ditch it quickly if I thought mm -hmm. somebody was going to catch me with it or something. And um, did you have like a, this some problem where they like a catch you with a knife in Europe or every time you like it was smooth? Yeah, it was smooth. I mean, I always, I never had to ditch any knives. I mean, obviously with the agency, you're supposed to blend in. You don't want to draw attention to yourself. You yeah. want to look like a, you want to look like a normal everyday person walking down the street. And so, yeah, fortunately, I never had to throw away any knives or get rid of any knives. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I love knives. I'm a knife junkie. I have a gazillion and one knives. I so say you're, you're probably one of the few people that may own more knives than I do, but I'm always buying knives. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> and do you have like a, your favorite one now? Like uh, that you like, wow, this is like uh, my baby. <laughs> that is a great question. So I, my company makes a few knives. I know you make a heck of a lot more knives than I do, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's a small knife and it's actually on the, on the shelf over there, but it's called the Berserker Blade. It's a really tiny fixed blade. Wow. Let, me, let me grab it here. I'm going to I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, of course, grab it. Yeah, yeah, so this is just a small one. This is a small, I mean, it's a really <laughs> tiny, and I'll make sure you guys can see it. Oh, that's pointy, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really tiny fixed blade knife. It's got a little sheath. It clips uh -huh. right in there, so it doesn't it doesn't take up much space or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I like small fixed blade knives, but if you see behind me, you can see my knife case there. I've got, I, I'm just, you know, I've got so many knives. I'm carrying a different knife very often. And obviously, I train with all my knives, which is just like a gun. If you carry different guns, you should train with your guns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, depending on the day, you may find me with a fixed blade. You may find me with a folder. <laughs> it, it really depends what I'm doing and where I'm going. And uh, Jason, since you are special, uh, is uh, self-defense, what is like um, 
Your favorite tool, tools, maybe you can also mention more um, for the self-defense that it's not a firearm. You know, everything, but not a firearm. What, do you, what would you choose? Some areas, maybe they, they can have firearm, you know? I like the tactical pen. You can carry it everywhere. I've flown all over the world with it. It's a regular writing pen, but you know, you can stab somebody if you have to, so it can do some damage. Uh, besides the tactical pen, obviously knives. I'm carrying knives. Mm -hmm. Flashlights. I like a good metal flashlight where you can strike somebody if you need to. Mm -hmm. And in the United States, mm -hmm. in most places, we can carry a stun gun flashlight. So it's basically like a taser, except it's not shooting out the barbs. Oh, wow. And stun gun flashlights, mm -hmm. if you put mm -hmm. that stun gun flashlight, it hurts like crap. Um, so those are some of my favorite self-defense weapons that are not a gun. And did you have had also like uh, experience with the telescopic baton? Yeah, so my, my very first job out of college was a police officer. And so we got issued a baton. And I think the baton's great, too. I mean, you can extend it very, very quickly. You could obviously self-defense, strike somebody in the head if you mm -hmm. need to smash out a window. I know, where is it, California and a few states, you're not allowed to have the baton. They're illegal. I uh, heard that, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm in Utah. We can carry pretty much anything we want as long as you're not a convicted felon. So I, if you're legally allowed to, I think the baton is a great weapon. Yeah, I, I agree. I really like it as well, if you can handle it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, Jason, I was about to ask, like, because um, I think knife throwing, it's portrayed so bad in the Hollywood movies. And I was wondering, how do you see uh, CIA portrait in the Hollywood? Do you think they did a the good job or it's more so like... Uh, over exaggerated or more like a how do you see it so it's very very over exaggerated it's very very fake what mm -hmm. i always tell people is in the cia a lot of the time there's nothing happening meaning you're blending in you're looking like a normal person mm -hmm. so if you're jumping out a helicopter or shooting someone on the streets of paris that means something's <laughs> gone horribly wrong right that's not reality and mm -hmm. Hollywood would not sell many movie tickets if they showed what the yeah. real CIA was like. So <laughs> I realize they've got to entertain people. They've got to make it exciting, but it's very, very fake. It's not the truth at all. Yeah. And uh, we can also say like uh, we actually met because of the people, because of the video uh, combat knife throwing. So I actually really like your opinion about the uh, combat knife throwing. So maybe you can uh, say it like uh, again for those people who don't see the video, because I really like that you said like you need uh, another weapon. So maybe you can uh, tell like more a little bit about uh, this situation. Sure. So everything I do is personal protection related, meaning when I'm training people, I'm training them to survive home invasions, to survive attacks on the streets and all that type of stuff. So when I'm training somebody and they, they're carrying a knife, I say, listen, if you're going to come out and you're going to throw that knife, you would never throw the knife if you don't have a backup weapon. So yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. for instance, where I'm at in Utah, I've always got a gun on me. I've always got a knife on me. If mm -hmm. I saw a need to throw a knife, well, then I could throw my knife and then I can transition and come out with my gun. Perfect, because yeah. Mm -hmm. The perfect thing to do, because when you throw a knife at somebody, they're going to cover up, they're going to block, they're going to try not to get hit. Mm -hmm. And that gives you time to come out with your pistol and draw your gun. So I think knife throwing is awesome. I love knife throwing. But if you're doing it in a self-defense situation, you would never throw your knife because then if you have nothing else, well, that guy, if you miss, could pick up your knife and use it against you. So always have multiple weapons on your body at all times if you're going to throw a knife. Exactly. I would totally agree because this is like a 90% of my comment, like, why do you giving away this weapon? Like, but I always carry like a multiple knives on me. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, if you carry, because I know, I know many places you can't carry guns. I realize that. Mm -hmm. So like you said, if you don't have a gun where you can come out and draw your gun, we'll have multiple knives. That way you can throw one and then come yeah. out with another one and mm -hmm. do all that. So it's always backups to the backups, multiple backups. Exactly, yeah. And uh, what is like the biggest mistake that you see people doing in the self-defense, Jason? The biggest mistake I see people doing is trying to make it too complicated. 
So mm -hmm. trying to learn all these fancy ninja moves, like 77 moves is, guess what? From the throw it up is where you want to strike. You can do palm strikes, you can do punches, whatever, but you it's all about being more aggressive. It's being overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. You know, you never just throw one punch and then yeah. wait and see what the guy does. Is you overwhelm them like crazy until the threat is on the ground, until they no longer attack you. So I tell people who like, I can teach anybody in two days how to defend themselves and how to know everything they need, which is, you know, I do that. We have a class called mm -hmm. Spy Dangerous, and in two days, I can train them. So mm -hmm. I tell people, like, you don't well, need to spend 10 years getting your black belt in seven different martial arts because a lot of that is going to be worthless. So it's all about the correct strikes and learning how to be aggressive, developing that aggressive mindset. I see that you maybe have developed everything more like from the Krav Maga. Is this your like a favorite Krav Maga self-defense system? So, no, I mean, there's nothing. Krav Maga is fine. I have a lot of friends that teach Krav Maga, nothing wrong with it. But the system I teach is based on what I learned at the CIA. And it's a lot of different things. Mm. To and it's it's basically mm -hmm. the best in one. Um so there's, uh -huh. there's no real there's no real martial art name for it. It's it's what works uh -huh. when you're attacked and you need to stop an attack quickly. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, can normal people train with you if like they like uh, go on your website and they can sign up, or you do this or for only for special people? Or how it works? No, I train all types of people. So I train celebrities. I train musicians, oh. high net worth individuals. Uh, I mm -hmm. train politicians, the, the good politicians. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, if people go to the website, it's tacticalspyschool.com. They can see all the training we offer. And I mean, I, I've i trained everybody, every walk of life, every background, lawyers, doctors, you can name it. And most of them realize we live in a dangerous world and they just want to be safer. Yeah. I really love your videos about the protection of the house. I was watching that, everything, you know. It's, I think a lot of people should watch your channel and they would definitely feel safe in the night, I think, in the bad places. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, if, if anybody wants to see more, just go to YouTube and go Jason Hansen CIA and they can see all the information, they can see all the channels and uh, subscribe. And I truly appreciate that because... Like you, I love knives. I want to make people safer. And I love, by the way, I, I love all the stuff you're doing with your knives and your axes Thank and all you. that. So very cool gear. Thank you so much, Jason. I will definitely put uh, every your information, what you want in the description below. So people can definitely see. And uh, if you want to mention something on the end, maybe like uh, some self-defense message to the world, what would be, what would be? <laughs> But the, the message is a message which people already know is keep your head up and pay attention because criminals case victims. They're looking around for the easiest target. If your head is up, they're going to see you're not an easy target. And then the other message is when I'm teaching my self-defense stuff, I say, listen, no longer does CIA stand for Central Intelligence Agency. It stands mm -hmm. for crash into attacker. So the moment somebody grabs you, the moment somebody threatens you, you just immediately mm -hmm. come out and crash into them. Mm -hmm. And you overwhelm them with violence. And that is how you stay safe. I love this, guys. So you heard it. Don't be a safe target. Check out the Jason. Smash the like on this video. Share it with your friends. And we are signing out. Bye, guys.